What's up, everybody? Um, same dude, same haircut, different red gun shirt today. Um, but here we are talking about some fitness sciencey stuff. So, <clears throat> what I want to talk about today is waist trainers. So, I want to get into a little bit of what are they? Um, what are they supposed to do? What do they actually do? Um, who can benefit from them? And you know, maybe who should who should avoid them? Uh, how do I feel about them? Do I recommend them? And if so, uh, at what protocols and that sort of thing? Um, so I will get into it. So first, I want to talk about what they are. Um, so there's a couple things that you might that might come to mind with this. So the first one is going to be the or the one I'm, that I'll just get out of the way because it's not what I'm talking about is the sweat belts. Okay, so the ones that you wear around your waist um, and even other parts of your body. They make them for other parts of your body. So you, you might wear them to get rid of uh, water around your waist. Um, some companies might promote fat loss through these um, these methods, but it doesn't work that way. So I'm not talking about the sweat belts. So it's just like the neoprene Velcro thing that you wrap up. Um, it makes you warm, and you know you do the cardio or whatever you're doing, and it makes you sweat. You take it off on Instagram for everybody to see your wet abs, and hopefully you get a bunch of likes from it. That's not what I'm talking about. So what I'm talking about is the corset style waist trainer um, that you, I'm not even 100% sure how they work, but I know some of them have like Velcro and then some of them you can have like little hooks, like a bra or something. And so you just hook it and then there's certain ways to adjust it so that it gets tighter, um, you know, depending on your size and also how, you know, how you change as you diet or whatever you're doing. So those are the ones I'm talking about. <clears throat> Excuse me. So those, um, the premise behind them uh, or the point of them is to shrink your waist, right? So depending on how they're marketed and what brand they are and that kind of thing, the idea is that if you wear them for a specified amount of time during certain activities, uh, it will make your waist smaller, which we all know that in bodybuilding is a good thing. And even in life, right? Because if you see someone, um, you know, it's for years and years, the hourglass shape for a female has been, uh, you know, popularized in, in um, pop culture. And of course, you know, in bodybuilding, you want to have a good V taper, which means your shoulders and lats are wide and your waist is small. And then your legs um, go out wide to make the, the complete X frame, um, you know, at the bottom of the V taper. Um, so uh, the point of them is to make your waist smaller. All right. So do they do that? Um, yes, they might. So if they do, um, what they're doing is one of two things. Um, they're either atrophying, um, which means to shrink your muscles in that area. Okay, so your obliques, your abdominals, um, transverse and uh, rectus, and then serratus, any of the muscles of the, the uh, core um, area, core area, um, the intercostals, um, and any that I may be missing, feel free to comment below. But anyway, so the muscles that it's wrapped around, it's going to, you know, it's potentially going to shrink those muscles. The reason it shrinks those muscles is because if you wear it tight enough, you cannot engage those muscles when you're training or living life and muscles that are not used will shrink, period. So that's one way uh, that it could work. Um, that's not good. Uh one, you know, from a performance and life standpoint, if your core is weak, um, you are setting yourself up to injure your spine. Um, you know, you could injure your hips, you could injure uh, a number of things, you know, just because your core is not strong enough to stabilize the rest of your body, right? So if you do any exercise in the gym, pretty much, in order to do that exercise, you know, unless you're just sitting still and, and moving your arms or something, you're going to brace. And even in those types of movements, you're going to brace most of the time. So if you can't brace your body when you're doing movements, one, you're not protecting your spine. Two, you're not able to do those movements at their full um, capacity because you don't have the stability to move heavy enough weight. If you can't move heavy enough weight, you're going to lack stimulus to grow the muscles that you're trying to work. Um, so disengaging the muscles of the midsection via a waist trainer is in my opinion, not a very good idea because it takes away from training of the other muscles and it also prevents, um, you know, stabilizing the spine with your own body. So that's one way that it could work, <clears throat> in my opinion, on that, um, you know, trying that. 
The other way that it might work is displacing your organs inside of your midsection. So <clears throat> if you squeeze tight enough for a long enough period of time in the midsection, the organs can actually move up or down from where they are because if they're being pressed you know, out of their normal spot, then eventually they will shift a little bit. Um, I don't know if I have to go into a lot of detail to explain why that's probably not good. Um, you know, your body is designed in a specific way, in, you know, specific um, order, if you will, of, you know, where the organs are placed and that kind of thing. So if you're moving your organs around to make your external um, visual a certain way, then, I mean, maybe the sport's not worth it. Um, so, you know, for that, my advice would be to get everything else bigger um, so that your waist looks smaller. So, Again, you know, that could lead to some unhealthy side effects if your organs do get shifted around. Um, you know, you might have to end up having surgery um, to fix that or, you know, whatever. So that's an issue that you could get with it. So those are the two ways that it can actually work to make your way smaller. Neither of which, in my opinion, um, result to or lead to good results um, when it comes to a complete physique um, or, you know, a, a healthy physique uh, or a healthy body long term. Now, obviously competing is not 100% healthy and I'm, I'm not here to dispute that um, because I know there are a lot of, you know, issues with competing as far as health. But if that's one you can avoid, I would recommend avoiding it, um, especially because, like I said, with the training, you're able to train the other muscles harder if you have a core that is strong enough to brace, um, to, you know, to move heavy weight. So those, those are the two ways that it could work. Um, and like I said, neither of those sound like a very good idea. Now, the other um, issue that I have with, or actually I'm going to talk about some positive stuff first and then I'll go to the, the last issue that I have, just so it doesn't sound like this whole video is just to bash anybody that wears a waist trainer because that's not what it's, that's not what I'm trying to do. Um, so the, uh, so some of the benefits of a waist trainer, um, and I, I'll go into these because, you know, or I'll go into other ways to achieve these results without using waist trainer. So one thing that a waist trainer can do, it can remind you of posture, right? So if you're wearing a waist trainer, you're not going to slouch because you physically can't. It's in the way and it's holding you in a, a good, you know, chest up, waist tight, um, shoulders back type of posture just because you're being forced to do that. My recommendation would be to just practice that on your own without some type of reminder. Maybe if you have to put a note or something at your office in your, you know, or at your desk in your office or wherever you are often, you know, put a note to remind yourself to have good posture and to pull your midsection in so that you've got control over it. So that would be, you know, that, that would be a benefit, you know, if you do have bad posture, um, to remind you to keep good posture and you wouldn't necessarily have to wear it too tight, uh, to achieve that. So that could be one benefit of it. Um, the other benefit um, is kind of goes along with posture, but as far as, you know, if you have midsection control issues, um, you know, as a, as a bodybuilder eating tons and tons of food, you know, a lot of times we'll get a distended belly after a meal, um, just about every meal, honestly, in the off season. And so it's important for us to make sure we maintain control of the midsection, you know, so that we don't get, um, you know, the, the growth gut type of look. Um, you know, again, another way to do that is just to, to, learn to control that on your own and make sure that you are always engaging your midsection. Um, so, you know, those two things could be a potential benefit for it. Um, I do have a client that wears one, um, pretty regularly, uh, because she says it makes her feel, um, uh, stable, I guess, I think is what she said. Um, she wears it to remind herself to keep, you know, her midsection engaged. And then she wears it almost as like a, like a, a comfort, like security type of, um, feel for her midsection. I don't, you know, she doesn't wear it crazy tight all the time, um, but it's more of a, she likes the way it feels type thing. So I'm not here to argue with that, right? So if you like to do something and you like the way it feels, or you think it helps you in some way, you know, I'm not here to argue with that, you know, especially with my clients and, and you know, this particular client has done really well, you know, competing under me since we've gotten started together. So you know, I don't argue with her about that. And, and, you know, I know that she's not wearing it, you know, in, in a way that's going to negatively affect her. Um, 
So, you know, that's, that's another part of it, right? And everybody's, you know, the individual and everybody has different preferences and that sort of thing. So nothing is absolute in this industry. So anyway, so that's another part of it, you know, that can potentially be a benefit. Now, my other caveat um, would be digestion. So if you're wearing it very tight, like I said, you know, you might want to wear it to remind you to engage your midsection and keep yourself from um, allowing your belly to be distended. If you're having issues with a distended belly from your meals and your food, and you're wearing something to squeeze said midsection, you're probably disrupting digestion, which is actually going to make the problem worse. So that's probably not a good idea for that instance, because as you know, as a bodybuilder or any type of competitor that has to eat a lot of food in the off season, if you are disrupting digestion with something external like a waist trainer, that could end up causing you know some problems with with digestion and and ultimately you know how much you're able to grow because you're not absorbing and using the nutrients that you're taking in like you could be. Um, so in summary, um, you know, I'm not four way strainers. Um, like I said, I've got a, I've got at least one that I know of, and I think I got another client that wears one pretty regularly. We haven't really talked about it, but, um, like I said, I'm not here to, to bash anybody that does it or to tell anybody that they absolutely can't or anything like that. Those are just my opinions, you know, on, on what they do and, and the mechanisms, and maybe some alternatives, you know, for achieving the same results. So, like I said, I'm, my opinion is that, you know, there are better ways to achieve what you're trying to accomplish from it or from wearing one. And, you know, so that's my recommendation. Um, you know, if you like it and you want to wear it and, you know, it's not affecting you negatively, then, you know, go, go for it. Continue, you know, doing that. And, you know, if you're getting good results because of, you know, one thing or another with it, then, I'm not here to dispute that, you know, it's, you know, that's, that's great. Um, you know, there's a, a thousand different ways to get to an end goal in the sport and not everything is absolute. So again, you know, I'm not going to recommend them. Um, I'll, like I said, even discourage them. Um, but if I have someone that likes them, um, then that's fine. Um, and if you are not a client of mine and you know, you want to wear one, then by all means, go ahead. Um, but I appreciate you guys sticking with this one. Um, this is something, like I said, I get asked frequently about this and, you know, I just wanted to kind of address it, um, once and for all. Um, if you have any comments below or comments, please put them below or any thoughts, put them below. Um, whatever you want to talk about, just, um, type it in. And if I can get some engagement on here, that would be great for the algorithm or whatever. Um, cause I am trying to grow this. So if you guys don't mind subscribing and that sort of thing, please do. Um, like I said, any questions or comments or anything, I didn't say that, but any questions, um, put them below, comments, whatever you have. But again, thank you guys for watching. I really appreciate it. And I will see you next time I get a good question or something. Thanks.